Let's go down here. We saw he was sitting directly on his right, right? Yep. Okay. Spike Shot Elder is the first pick. That's what he took first, a Spike Shot Elder? Yep. Very aggressive, R really one good one. card. It's good in the Black Red blood sh uh, Bloodthirst deck. It's good in the Red White, you know, uh, Equipment, Enhance My Guys kind of deck. Yeah. It's like the Rich Man's Bloodshot training. Wow, Copper Carapace goes straight to the front, second pick. It looks like Pascal's Cambodian ready to rumble Ashmore here. Gorger. I like the Gouger. Is he going to second pick Carapace? Nah, he's just looking at the other cards. There's much Narcolepsy? better cards in this I guy. agree. Yeah. What's he going to take then? Gouger? Yeah, I like Gouger here. Or Cathodian. Cathodian's also a reasonable choice, I think. But he's already taken a red card. And right. Yeah, it looks like one red, but that thing costs two and a red to activate the, c the creature he's already taken. Yeah, it's and one so RR. He, he's actually quite red at this point if he wants to play that card. Agreed. I think I like Gouger. I think I like Gouger, too. He's looking he at Slaughtermaster. He's looking at Cathodian. Slaughtermaster could put him down the... The red white or enhance my guy's double strike deck. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be where the spike shot elder is best. Is yes. in red white. Yes, because it gets the small things out of the way, and that's all you really need to do in that deck. It also acts as reach down the line, and if you equip the spike shot elder with some equipment, it can really do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. He goes cathodian. He took the cathodian. All right, that is the more middle ground pick. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it gives it's the up most flexible. It's yeah. the safest. Yeah, it's going to be good in whatever deck he winds up with. He's got past another Vyashino Slaughtermaster here, which Hikari. he kind of paused at here. And there's a Hikari up there as well. That's interesting. I mean, that's 4-4 four 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 flying for 5. Thief of Hope. And gets better from there. Fits into red-white. Hikari I does. I like Hikari here. There's another Slaughtermaster. I mean, all those Slaughtermasters could circle the table and come back to him. Yeah. Maybe he gets the Thief of Hope back and, and moves into Spirit, something like that. Right. And I think but I take a card. seems to be the pick here. <coughs> He's got the Viashino Slaughtermaster pulled to the front still, but that doesn't mean much. He's still thinking. There we yeah. go. Oh, oh, oh he fake. got me right out of my shoes there, Pascal. <laughs> nice fake. It can't be Slaughtermaster. I don't think so. It has to be Hikari. Yeah, I, I think Hikari's worth moving into white for. It's a color that he's likely to be paired with anyway right. if he wants to play. It's the best color to pair picks. with the cards that he's taken so far. You're, you're not committed. No. It's also somewhat of a signal to see Hikari third pick. You know, it's, it's, it's not one that you want to mm -hmm. move in too hard on, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a data point. All right, so there's Glint Hawk Idol. Which is kind of white and also kind of infinity. And there's another another random double striker that isn't going to be high priority for anyone who's other than red white. Those are the picks. There's not a great card here. Hey, goes Glint Hawk Idol. He had some. His first deck this morning was blue white artifacts. Yes. Gus Skimmer was a card he took pretty aggressively. Oh, wow, the, the double Hobgoblin. strike deck double is it's here. there. I mean, he passed the Sky Hunter Skirmisher. I'm taking Hobgoblin. The Slaughter here. Masters. I think he just wants to move in on this deck. You've had some success with it, right? You think it's pretty good? I think it's good if if it's flowing. If you're getting the uncommons, like it's not the kind of that if you just get all the best commons, it's kind of only okay. Mm -hmm. You got to get the right number of double strikers and the right number of enhancers. But like Hobgoblin, it plays like a four four for three. It does. Right, two two double strike for three mana is is good. And you're getting it, what is this, fifth pick, fourth pick? Yeah. I would totally hobgoblin here. And now, you know, if the Slaughtermasters come back, if the Skirmisher comes back, suddenly you've got half a dozen Oro Swift Blades. Speaking of speaking of the good uh, the good cards for that deck. Now you mentioned the double strikers, but also the enhancers. What what are the premium enhancers for this deck? I mean equipment are the are the best things you can get. Like Dark Steel Axe is probably the most realistic one. Cranial plating's not always absurd, but but good enough? Uh, I mean, cranial plating is great if you can get it. You'll settle for Dark Steel Axe. Um, you'll put enough artifacts, other artifacts, that the cranial plating will be worth it. The, uh, but just the giant growth effects are good enough. Even Fortify. If you attack them with two or three double strikers and cast Fortify, 
suddenly you just deal an extra 12? <laughs> right? That's, yeah, totally. that's a thing that can happen. Absolutely. Easily. And brute force is plus six, plus six, effectively. Mm -hmm. There's a core duelist yeah, yeah. down now there. Now, he doesn't have any equipment yet. The equipment is the most resilient thing you could do. A goblin war paint, by the way, in a pinch can, can serve as a... The one-shot equipment? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think you take core duelist here and hope that you can start getting some equipment. Yeah, I think the otherworldly journey is a nice one in this deck, too. It puts a plus sure. one, plus one counter on it. Often will save you creature from removal. You know, you mentioned that, too. The main core of this deck is made up of double strikers and enhancers, but there is one other side element to it. It's, it's creature or cards that protect those creatures right, to keep them hitting. Yeah, Apostle's Blessing is nice. Yeah. Otherworldly Journey are nice. I mean, you are a little bit fragile in that you have to have your double striker and your enhancer, so being able to protect those creatures is nice. Especially for cheap. Yeah, so now there's, there's a Slaughter Master, Master here. Yeah, here we it's go. Slaughter Master versus Otherworldly Journey in my mind. I think Slaughter Master makes sense. You're I not think he guaranteed. Just wants all of his creatures to have double strike. Yes. And if if he wheels the Slaughter Masters here, I think they will. He yeah, I mean, even he could go that skirmisher. I agree. Nobody else wants it. Now double white, and it doesn't really fit in any other deck. <laughs> we'll see. So we'll know. He's now picked a lane. Yes. And uh, we're going to do a lane check and a few picks here yes. to see if he's still in it or I not. I think that. I think that analogy is exactly correct. If his next picks go... Oh, Carapace came back from his opening pack. Totally Carapace here. Or second, next, his second pick. Carapace is good in this deck, right? Yeah. No, he, this is equipment is exactly it. what he wants. Yeah. I mean, it's also solid in Affinity. It's a one-drop artifact. But this is the deck where Carapace is at its best. Right. He's already got a core duelist. He could easily pick up Sunspear Shikaris. It's great on his double strikers. He's it's not like you've worried got about blocking that often. Slaughter there Master came back. As predicted. And a Carapace? Yes. And a Mighty Leap. Mighty Leap is a nice giant growth effect for this deck. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. I mean, uh, you can make a case for any of those three cards. I like taking the Slaughter Master. I, I, I think that he wants to make sure that he plants his flag here. He's not going to be able to pump it, but the chances that he gets zero art, uh, e equipment more are pretty low. There are more double strikers than there are equipments that enhance them. But you need more double strikers, right? Also true. W what's critical mass for this type of deck? You I know, wh wh what are you looking at? I mean, how many equipment do you need before you're going to play Core Duelist? Like four or five? Four to five, yeah. Yeah, he's only got one. This is a tough pick. That is actually interesting, isn't it? I mean, there's probably a Skirmisher or coming in the next pack. A Slaughter Master, I think. He, the foil one's next, right? Oh, is that right? He yeah. Could, if he and goes then, like, three picks after that, he can pick up the Skirmisher. Okay, he goes... He goes Slaughter Master, which is fair enough. His if his next two picks go Double Striker, Double Striker, he's going to wish he had retroactively taken there the... There it uh, is. That's the right. foil one. Yeah, if those two coming back, he's going to retroactively wish he had taken yeah. the Carapace. He's going to skip a couple of picks here, but with like two cards, I believe, left in the pack, he could find himself a Skirmisher that's actually going to make his main deck. Yep. You knew, you know you picked the right colors yes. if you can do Lane that. Yes, lane check passed. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and it has, for sure. Yeah, he's the only one in this. This is not a very popular lane. No, it's not. He was not expecting much competition for this lane and i think he actually you know those first couple of picks you know with the first pick spike shot elder i think maybe he was thinking this could be an open lane anyway i like it i like what he's doing here i think this deck i don't know if this deck's great but i do think it's underrated and i mean look we're do it's booster draft right getting into the underdrafted color is the best thing you can do that is the name of the game and pascal's done it in this case it's an entire archetype but it looks like he has it completely to himself so he's kind of at the mercy of you know what awesome cards he can open a little bit you know but it's he's got to feel relieved here though right i mean he can start taking removal spells and passing double strikers and feeling fairly confident that they'll come back fortify, fortify. so good that's great wow that is super good here <laughs> the arms get folded for pascal and good for him that is a nice card to wheel now i think this next one is where that skirmisher was no it doesn't look like he's getting that back no, that's another enhancer though was that Blades, Blades of Ellis? Yeah. Oh, that's plus plus two plus O to two different creatures, yeah. right? Yeah, it's almost four to five. War paint <laughs> and the war paint too. In a pinch. Yeah, well you said it was in a pinch. Not not the ideal card you right. want to play there. I like this deck. Right. So and you know I, I just remembered as well that Carapace pick also very difficult because of his first pick here too, the Spike Shot Elder. Right. You right. know that's another really important thing that he yeah, can do Yeah, the enhancers here. like Blades and Fortify will sort of one-shot. If you have mana left over, you can maybe shoot something, but that's pretty mana-intensive. Yeah, but the but the permanent ones, the, the equipment, he can put those on the Spike Shot Elder, all of a sudden it starts throwing lightning bolts around. Right, yeah, equipment 
are the best enhancers. He's only got the one so far. But yeah, this deck this is a great place to be. I, I Three Slaughter Masters? I think you would trade, in retrospect, in retrospect a Slaughter Master for a second Carapace. That's you'd rather right. have two of each. Yeah, you're nervous. You're given a little nervous about not getting the right equipment. Although he did not get the Skirmisher back. No. So he's got, what, three, five Double Strikers? He's got the hob Hobgoblin and the Swift Blade. Yep, he's also got that Spike Shot Elder. It doesn't have Double Strike, but... Right, and the Core Duelist, but... Um, Glint Hawk Idol. <laughs> sure. Is that a player in this deck? Um, I mean, I it's a decent card. Uh, it has evasion. Uh, it's Doesn't okay. It doesn't wear particularly like well, <laughs> as it turns out. I don't think you want it in your main deck, but, I mean, I probably played above Goblin Warpaint. Okay. Sickle Slicer? Yeah, I, I like Sickle Slicer better. There's a lot of good equipment floating around. Whoa! Uh, opened <laughs> a foiled Tarmac. Oh, what do you do? Oh, uh, that one looks really oh nice in God. a trade binder. He looks at the back. He's got to check the He's condition out. He's checking the condition. It is stamped. <laughs> is there anything good stamped for his deck? Stamped foil Tarmac. There's All right, oh, burst Pascal, lightning. what are you made of here, buddy? Wow. Stamped what are foil you made Tarmacoy of Pascal From a Grand Maynard. Prix Top 8. You know, that could go in his collection for a very long time. That is that is a yes. That is a nice souvenir from Grand Prix Las Vegas. Yeah, that not is a, a bad souvenir. The best modern masters souvenir <laughs> on the planet, <coughs> right? What better souvenir could you walk away from this weekend with? I mean, would you rather have that or a Grand Prix trophy? That is the question, Pascal Vainar. <laughs> that is the question. It. Foil Tarmogoyf. Pascal ends up taking the foil Tarmogoyf. He can't bring himself to take the burst lightning <laughs> over it. <laughs> And he passes it back. That was fantastic. All right, back to business here, though, for Pascal. Brute this is forces. funny. I, I can hear the Nico Nico stream just going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're pretty far away, too. Uh. And brute force is the pick here, Randy? I think so. What else is he going to take? Nothing else. All right, it's a solid enhancer. I mean, it's the best non-equipment enhancer in my mind. Maybe fortifies better. It also can save your creatures from a few oh yeah. removal spells. I mean, I think too. Brute Force is playable just in decks. You know, in, this, in this deck, it has awesome synergy. Brute Force is one of those, uh, those color-shifted cards that doesn't bother me. Sure. Almost all of them do. Hmm. Yeah, Mighty Leap. Well, he's getting his instance. Where are the Double Strikers? Now, I see a Goblin Fire Slinger on the right-hand side, too. Um... Does this thing often have a, a Bloodthirst sub mm. theme going? Not really. Not really. No, you want every creature to be double strike. I mean, even if you ha randomly had a couple of Bloodthirsters, I'm not sure you would even play the Fire Slinger. Yeah, I Mighty Leap here. Yeah, that's what he does. Well, now he can send that You're not happy about to it. the sky. Yeah, exactly. Gets plus one, plus one, because there's now an instant in the graveyard. It's all good. <laughs> Comboing off. <laughs> There's cranial a cranial plating. plating. Now, how good is plating? It's going to give plus one good plus enough. one at the minimum. He's got a carapace. <coughs> he would love to have four or five pieces of equipment in his deck. Yeah, he's not even going to think very long. I, I slam the, the cranial plating there. Glint Hawk Idol is now a better card, by sure. the way. I mean, if you get plating at plus two plus zero, oh, you're just happy, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Two's plenty. Even one. It's not nothing, right? Right. It's always one. Killing two toughest creatures with your spike shot elder is a lot better than killing one toughest creatures. Yeah, it enables a lot of great attacks. And, and like I said, we he won. I mean, we're what halfway through the draft, and he's already got two pieces of equipment. He can still get to five. There's a skirmisher. There's a sky hunter skirmisher. Seems to be the pick. Oh, there's carapace. also a copper carapace. I don't though. know which of those is. Those are the those are the options. Now, interestingly, he is very heavy red here as well. So the skirmisher is not his favorite double striker. Yeah, it's not his favorite, but it is a good one. Flying, of course, means that those. If those it wasn't beats for continue. the plating, I would probably take skirmisher here. But the fact that I've drafted a cranial plating might make me lean toward carapace. And Pascal agrees. I know I mean either one of those decks before. It looks like Pascal has as well. Yeah, he's coming to a lot of the same. Flare husk. Solid. All right, is flare husk good? It's good enough. It's not amazing, but I mean. Kay. It's an enhancer. It hits core duelist. It hits any sun spears that you pick up. You're do I mean, look, giving a double striker plus one plus one is like giving it plus two plus two. Right. It's plenty. 
And there's still the plating thing. Yeah, no, I think he's now set up where Cordulas can be in the main. He's now set up where to make any Sunspear Shikari's good. And any future Double Strikers are good. I like where this deck's at. There's the Sunspear Shikari. Uh, I think I take Shikari over Flare Husk, I think. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That Shikari's done a lot of work over the course of this tournament so far. It's definitely one of the better two drops. Like you said, you'd prefer to have all your creatures with... with yeah, that's my only hesitation. This is close enough. Yeah. <laughs> you could play Mutagenic Growth in this deck. Pay oh. two life, plus two, plus two. Zero mana Giant Growth. And what is he going to pick up here? Yeah, it's like a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing is right. Yeah. I mean, I guess you take the raise because it... Yeah. I don't think you want to play it, but you could... No. If somehow you didn't you know, get anything out of pack three. Yeah, you know, it's not it's not the worst either. I mean, creating two bodies that can hold equipment isn't isn't the worst case scenario. It's not what this deck's really trying to do. Gutshot's but I could just pretty it. bad in this environment it's too, terrible. right? It's terrible. Feels like it should be better than it is somehow. It yeah, just free doesn't kill damage. Anything. It just doesn't do anything. There's another Sunspear Shikari, wow. so a and nice pickup here. Yeah, the Kite Sail is probably pretty good in this deck, too, though. It does feel like the balance is starting to shift towards... He, I think he needs a few more uh, creatures. Yeah, here. and there's no power on the Kite Sail, so the Kite Sail doesn't really help the Double Strikers. Doesn't really help the Spike Shot Elder. Well, he gets plus one, plus oh. Oh, my, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so a little bit. All right, he's going to take it here. He must yeah. value that quite highly. And All right, so now he's at the nothing stage here. Conclave Phalanx. It's the only card he can really really worth casting here for him. Interesting to take a look at this pack though, with just six <laughs> cards left and there's Kills three. Kills the Frogmite, not the Mirror Enforcer. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Th there's three pretty good cards for the uh for that deck. <laughs> you play Darksteel Citadel. How many cranial platings do you need before you put Darksteel Citadel in your red white deck? <sighs> It's not one, it's but like two? It's, it's three or two. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know which, which one of those it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it also takes it away from any Affinity player that might still be out there trying to long wheel all these cards. I mean, the odds of an Affinity player go down every time you see a three-card pack with Hover Guard. And mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a second yeah. Goblin War Paint. I don't think he's going to have to play those. A couple of Junkers at the end. Oh, mighty leap. Another Mighty Leap. All right, so it, I, I feel like his he needs to pick up more creatures. Yeah, know. he needs more creatures. now. I believe he got zero Double Strikers from that pack. He got two uh, Shikari. Which are good. Yeah, but he got zero Double Strikers. <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> he's going to set that one aside, I think. <laughs> He doesn't want to pick it up. I he doesn't want to handle it. I don't think that Tarmogoyf is going to be carrying any equipment this game. I don't even think it's going to touch his hand. He just wants to leave it on the table and not, like, risk putting fingerprints he's, on it. He's asking the judge if he can make two face-down piles. Right. Can I have a sleeve? One for my favorite souvenir from <laughs> <laughs> GP Las Vegas and the other for my deck. Better or worse souvenir than a first-place trophy? Way worse. Uh, how about a second-place trophy? <laughs> I think I'd rather <laughs> have that than a second place. You may have me. got me there, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Set of steak knives. <laughs> or that. I think it's a better souvenir than a second place trophy. You might be right. Get it framed. I'm here to tell that story forever. You're going to play the card's going to be good in a lot of formats for a lot of years. That is true. Though he's probably going to be compelled to get three more foil ones so they all match. <laughs> Track down the stamp. Yeah, it's a lot of trading. All right, so let's see what this last pack brings. Okay, we knew dark that. Steel axe. There's a dark steel axe. Perfect. That's what he's been hoping for this whole time. Yeah. And he does the cursory flip through the rest of the pack, but he knew dark steel axe yeah, is what he wanted. Yeah, this explains how Ben got a uh, primeval titan. Yes. Pascal very happy with this pack as well. Fortify might tap, might circle the table too. Should circle the table, I would think. Yeah, I wonder how many more of that type of effect he wants, the temporary ones. I mean, the equipment. Not much. I mean, Fortify is better than Mighty Leap in my mind. If he gets, you know, if he picks up two or three more Double Strikers. That said, I don't know that I would play two. He took the Raise the Alarm, right? From before? He did. Yeah. Fortify, Raise the Alarm. That's true. Piece together a win somehow. Just need a couple more creatures, I think. Yeah, I think Double Strikers is on his mind here. Swift Blades. Yeah, I was going to say, especially the, the sort of more red ones, like Swift Blade, Hobgoblin, Slaughter Master, so he doesn't have to play Skirmisher Mana. See how many more he can pick up here. 
Well, we'll start bloodshot with training. zero, but bloodshot, bloodshot training. training is great. That's fantastic. So the trainee, if its power is up <laughs> to four, you can tap it to have it do four damage. I mean, I described the, the spike shot elder as the uh, the rich man's bloodshot trainee. Why not both? <laughs> He's covering the rich and the poor end of the It turns out there. he drafted a deck that wants this card. Yeah, and you know, this is funny because those tiebreaker picks when he was taking the copper carapace now look firmly <laughs> swayed in the right direction. Uh, th I don't know, though. With no creatures in the last pack, the slaughter ma he maybe did need that slaughter master instead of the second carapace. That's true. Given the way the second pack went, he's gotten a he's gotten a bunch of equipment since then, and no more double strikers. I don't know. It's the kind of pick you have to be psychic to get right. Oblivion ring. Yeah, oblivion ring's a nice pickup yeah, here, but card. it does not have double strike. Oh, but I mean, solid removal. Yeah, great in. pickup for his deck. Don't get me wrong. It's I actually just got uh, slightly less removal than I would expect from a red white deck, right? He has no sun lance. No sun lance. No burst lightning. Had a chance at one of those. Had a chance at one of them. Um, but no, he doesn't have one. Oblivion Ring's probably his best removal spell at this point. No lightning bolts. <laughs> There's a Blood Ogre. That isn't really what he wanted no, either, though. Really. Now, so are it's you right. reading this as somebody moved in, or the packs just don't happen to have the double strikers around? I think it's the packs. Feels like the packs, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. He's trying to figure out if he can run Dispatch. Like, can he turn Metalcraft on? He's got a lot of equipment now. He, he's got a Darksteel Citadel. I don't think he can turn Metalcraft on reliably enough to put that card in his deck. Is it good enough just to sometimes tap a creature and get no. it with a double striker? No, so blo and Blood Ogre is good. That's the other thing. Yeah. Like, it may not have double strike, but 3-3 three, three first strike is big. Also carries equipment quite nicely. Yeah. Thank you very much. First strike. There's another Brute Force and a Moonlit Strider. But I'm starting to think he's not going to pick up any more double strikers here. How concerning is this? Um, I think the equipment theme came together well enough that it's not that concerning. Okay, he can just pile it on something else. He got else. two Sunspear Shikaris and a Core Duelist. So he's got three. And then... Spike Shot Elder, Bloodshot Training. So he's got five creatures that are great with equipment that don't have double strike. And then he's got five double strikers. Yeah, you, you want more. But you're going to be rounded out with a Blood Ogre and a couple other creatures. He's got at least a dozen good creatures in his deck. Might rather have 15. And there's a Skirmisher. Oh, now Skirmisher. Skirmisher. Versus the, the Sickle Slicer? Yeah. I think I would Skirmisher yeah, here. It feels like that's what he wants more. He also he doesn't have Evasion. I mean, getting a flyer is nice. Wow, is he looking at the Glinthawk idol? Maybe if he had taken the dispatch, I think the skirmisher is going to be his pick here. Yeah, I think he's got enough equipment. I don't think the Glinthawk idol, it doesn't have any synergy with his deck. I think the skirmisher is just better than the Glinthawk idol. And he agrees. That was a nice pickup, you know. Uh, yeah. We're, we're nearing the end of the pack here, and he's only got a couple more chances to pick up double strikers, and uh. it looks like that. Time has worn the thin ancient on him here. Or so oh, maybe Smash the Smithereens. I mean, Smash is a good sideboard card. It's funny though. There's so much, so many of the uh, artifacts cards have just gone late. There may not be anybody to sideboard Smash in against. <laughs> That's true. Al although you know what? It's good against him. Pu yeah, putting it in his sideboard means nobody gets to bring it in against <laughs> That's him. That's right. That's actually a relevant factor, especially here. in combat. You know, oh they yeah, blow yeah, up yeah, your yeah. equipment and eat your double striker, cards, and it's cards so hard amazing to recover. Cards against his deck. Another uh, Blood Ogre at the back Oh, there. wow. Yeah, Blood Ogre. Uh, this is an interesting litmus test. I'm very curious to see how well this deck does. I, I feel like this deck is good. It, it rules the early and mid game with combat and, uh, and equipment, yes. but it does not hold up well in the late game, I wouldn't think. Right. What's I mean, this big finish? It, it <laughs> eh. Boros Garrison's not bad. Rapid Flames could do it. I don't feel like if... The double strike archetype is viable. Pascal should do reasonably well. Okay. I mean, he is short of burst lightning from where he could be, but still. What was he? What was it? He said in the last round he, he was one he was vapor, one snag, vapor away snag away from, from satisfaction. And now he's one burst lightning away from <laughs> satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's satisfied. Yeah, I think by so the too. way. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, he will be the envy of his local <laughs> game store. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. He's the envy of the internet right now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Darks to sit it up. <laughs> yeah, I think he is. Yeah. 
Yeah, Citadel. The I Conclave mean, Phalanx the is a little scary. Yeah, it's good against him. <laughs> Dispatch. <laughs> okay, well, this is if you wondered whether there was an Artifacts deck, you now know for absolute sure. No. No one. Everyone was afraid of fighting for blue-white Artifacts, so no one moved in. Perfectly beautiful paved lane. Nobody driving down it. Yep. Interesting draft. Yeah, these these the having the draft be so black and white, mm -hmm. you know, whether are you in this deck or not, and how committed are you to it, is yeah. a is a di it's a different dynamic. Normally, there's a lot more overlap yeah, between different. Colors there are no formats that are more synergy driven than this one. Yeah, I've never I've never played one like that. They don't exist. They don't make them. Hey there, welcome back to the booth here at Grand Prix Las Vegas. So that was it. We got to see two exciting.